Hey everyone, thank you so much once again for joining us for another one of our Animal Career Day interviews. This is a series that we've been up to to go and showcase how many different careers are in the animal field, a lot of them people don't even know about, and how they all work together to go and create environments of conservation, education, and sustainability through zoos and parks across the country and even across the world. So this is a really great one. This again is another one that is so near and dear to my heart. Um, this is something that I have done and if you guys can't tell, I still do. I just happen to have a different name, but I love it. So I'm very excited about this. Before we go ahead and get started, guys, uh, you have been so amazing. I really cannot go and tell you how just super special you have made us feel, especially now that you guys can still come and visit us. We are open right now, so your outpouring of support has been so tremendous. We really appreciate it. If you can't come and visit us yet, but you still want to go and support us, donations are still always welcome. Again, you can donate right here on our Facebook page or by going to lionhabitatranch.org. We can't wait to see you soon. Don't forget, if you want to get Aussie paintings or if you want to go purchase online, you still can do those even though we are open to sell in here. So we know that there's so many of you who are uh, not from here who want to go and visit us, but you can't, don't worry, you can still shop online. We hope to see you soon though. So again, thank you so much. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. This is such a great topic. Again, I'm so excited to talk about this. Why don't you introduce yourself, my guest for today? Hi guys, my name is Emily Workman and I am an education specialist. So guys, education, 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 education. It is there's two sides to the same coin. It's taking care of the animals and it's teaching people about them. We got to do both. This is what we do. Education and conservation are the two pillars that facilities are built upon. And I have been dying to do this interview with an educator. So this is really, really great. Amazing. And um, a lot of people may not have even heard of your facility. So how did you come across that? Are you from that area or did you end up moving there? I am not from here. So I am originally from a smaller town in Southeast Iowa that's actually about seven hours from where I am now. So I've been at a couple different zoos um, in between moving from my hometown. There's no zoo. Um, the closest zoo to my hometown is a couple hours away. So there's nothing super close to where I'm from originally. So I've had to move around quite a bit for jobs. Um, and when I left my last job and I was applying different places, this was my closest job offer to my family. So seven hours was as close as I was going to be able to get to home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And again, guys, there's, there's still going to be a lot of competition in this field a lot of times. So again, be prepared where your first positions or even your second or third or fourth might not be anywhere near where you're from. So it's a good plan to realize that if you do want to work in this field, moving is probably going to be an option. But guys, it gives you so much ability to be able to go and move and see the country. How amazing is that? Great. Now, um, you are an education specialist. Why don't you go ahead and explain exactly what that does? So at my zoo, it's a little bit different than some zoos. At the different education departments um, at different zoos, they all work differently. Um, some zoos, educators are just teachers and that's all that they do. Some zoos, they take care of their animals as well. So here in Sioux Falls, I get to do kind of a mixture of both, which I really enjoy. So I do probably about, oh, 60% teaching and 40% animal care. So I still get to take care of my own ambassador animals, all the animals that I get to teach with, which I really enjoy. I like the mixture of doing both things. So I do everything from, I teach all ages. We have classes for newborns all the way up to senior citizens. I teach all ages of people, all different types of topics, classes, camps, sleepovers, you name it, we probably teach it. And I write curriculum. I come up with things for all for all of our camps and classes, and there's a whole lot that goes into it. That is so special. Um, guys, I was an educator for six years. It is something that I, I truly love to do, and I still obviously love doing it, which is why I wanted to do this video series. Um, and just to kind of give you a heads up, another term for this, which you might hear if you do want to get into the field, it would be an ambassador keeper or ambassador presenter. Sometimes those are mixed kind of interchangeably. So when you are looking at things in the career field, um, educator, education, or sometimes ambassadors might be kind of what you're looking for. So just kind of remember that. 
Um, when you are looking for the perfect candidate for a coworker, what would you be looking for? What kind of education or certifications do they have? And then what basic skills do you really think make this um, a bit of a challenging field for somebody to walk in and say, this is what I wanna do? What's your perfect candidate look like? So at my zoo, since we do also take care of the animals, you definitely have to have um, animal experience. You need to have, um, most of us have either zoo science or zoology or wildlife management degrees. So we all have education that is specifically in animal care. Um, I have almost a minor in education as well, which really helps for my particular position. And one of my coworkers, her degree is in um, wildlife management and education. So a mixture of all of that is super good. Um, for To be an educator, you have to be very positive. I know that um, a lot of my friends are zookeepers and zookeepers are great, but a lot of zookeepers aren't necessarily people people. They're more animal <laughs> people. And you have to at least kind of like people to be an educator because you're around people at least half of the time. So I stand up and teach in front of 500 kids at once and I have to like children to be able to do that. So um, being, being good with people and being able to communicate is definitely a big bonus. And you can't mind public speaking. I have spoken in front of crowds of anywhere from five kids to a couple thousand people all at a time. And so um, I'm basically, ha half of my job is being a professional public speaker. So you definitely have to be comfortable around people. And you can work into that. You don't have to necessarily go with big crowds right away, but you definitely need some practice with, with speech and things like that. Walk us through what your day is like. What are some of your daily tasks and kind of what are you doing start to finish? When, do your, when does your day start? So it depends on the week. My schedule changes every single week. So for a regular keeper position, um, your schedule would usually either stay pretty steady or it would only change if you would have an emergency or an animal birth or if you would have um, a special circumstance like that, or seasonally. Some zoos, um, keepers work longer hours in the summer. But other than that, a regular keeper position, the hours are going to stay pretty standard. Um, my hours change depending on what I have going on. So currently, um, we are just restarting all of our education programs back up. So right now, my hours are fairly typical, eight to five at the moment. But starting next week, I'll be back going on, um, we call our Zoomobiles where we travel with animals and we travel 150 miles around our city with animals in all directions. So um, I can work as early as, I think technically they can have me come in as early as 4 a.m. but I never schedule programs that early because I don't wanna come in at 4 a.m. So I think the earliest I've ever come in is 5.45 or 6 a.m. And then I can teach till as late as 9 to 10 p.m. depending on what the program is because I can have a festival that's two hours away that I took animals to and then I still have to drive back and unload my animals and do all of my number tracking and things like that. So my schedule can be totally different depending on what we have booked and what we have going on. Sounds I have, very fun though. Yes, it's very fun and I do not have a normal weekend. So that is another big thing for everybody to keep in mind is that I'm the lucky one at my in my department. I get Sunday Mondays off. So I have a Sunday, I have a weekend day off, but my coworkers all have weekdays off because um, a lot of the things that we do are going to be on Saturdays and Sundays and we have to be available for that. Plus we still have to take care of our animals on the weekends and holidays and all of that. Yeah, definitely. So, um, how many animals do you have in your department? Ooh, currently, unfortunately, I've lost a couple lately. It's with lots of smaller animals. They don't have as long lifespans. Um, I think we are in somewhere around 50 animals right now, somewhere in the, somewhere in the 50. So, a variety of things from... We take care of all ambassador animals. So ambassador animals are animals that we can travel with, things that are going to be friendly and safe for the most part, um, so they can get up close with people. So things like small reptiles, um, lots of lizards and snakes and tortoises, small mammals, porcupines, skunks, possums, ferrets, chinchillas, hedgehogs, um, and lots of birds, birds of prey. We have a big wildlife rehabilitation program here. So owls, hawks, and falcons, and parrots. 
Awesome. Wow. Guys, to kind of give you an idea, we have 50 animals total at the ranch. She has 50 animals in her department. So definitely a lot of care and a lot goes into that. Plus, again, they're traveling, making sure the animals are coming and going safely and all of that. That is so much work that these guys do. So this is something that is definitely just absolutely vital to a, a good, well-running department. Kudos to you. That is a big job. And our animals are absolutely the most important thing when we are traveling as well. So you have to think about things like in the car, your music can't be too loud because if an animal would happen to be in the distress, you have to be able to hear it. Um, we make, depending on how long our road trip is, we make periodic checks. We have to pull over and check on our animals, make sure they're okay, make sure we have extra food and water in case we need it, um, all different types of things like that. So animals are the most important part of the whole thing because without the animals, we wouldn't have any of it. So um, it's, it's a lot of extra precautions and a lot of extra work to make sure they get places um, safely. And then they have to have rest in between as well. We can't just take an animal out for 10 classes in one day and then do another five classes the next day. They have to have some rest days in between so that they can get their time off and, and not have to work every single day. Yeah, that is amazing. Think about just how much work is going into this, guys. This is so intricate. And as you can see, the animals are still the number one. So I love that. Do you happen to have a favorite animal or maybe a favorite species? I know this is always the hardest question for everybody, but sometimes there's always that one that speaks to you. Oh, this is the absolute worst question. Um, I have favorite species that I, my absolute favorite animals are um, elephants and pinnipeds, and I don't work with either of those things um, at the moment. But um, for my animals that I care for right now, um, this is a super random animal, but I have a large yellow-footed tortoise. She weighs about 19 pounds, and her name is Shelly, and she knows my shoes, and she knows my boots, and she comes for bananas. And she is, she's like a puppy with a shell. And she's turning 30 next year. And I cannot wait to throw her the biggest tortoise birthday party that a tortoise has ever gotten in their entire life. She's going to be a blowout and it's going to be a great time. I love this. Uh, I just interviewed a, a commissary keeper who gets to go and make cakes and stuff for these guys. So guys, we really do take this seriously. This is something that's really fun. Birthdays for animals. I love it. And I love that it is a reptile. I love that it is something where people wouldn't necessarily think of being cuddly, but they are amazing. I used to work with a yellow footed myself and I just, they are great, great animals. She's so shockingly that. cuddly. She will come sit right in my lap for neck scratches and shell scratches. If you didn't know this about tortoises, they can feel through their shells. They have nerve endings in there so they can feel when you touch them. So she has favorite places to be scratched and she just <laughs> loves all of the attention. Oh, that's so great. I love that. What is something that nobody would expect about your job? Hmm. hmm, that's a tough one. Um, probably that we have to go to school for it and that we train for it. I know, I'm sure all of you, if you're watching some of these other videos, you, you would know that by now. But school is, is a big part and a lot of people don't realize that, um, that zookeepers, even though we're picking up a lot of poop and we're getting messy every single day, but we had to work very hard to get to these places and we had to learn a lot to do it. Yes, definitely. And uh, yeah, I hear that all the, all day long. Yeah, if this is something where we've worked almost our whole lives to get to this point. So yeah, I definitely can see that. So yeah, and also I didn't know about the whole having to make stops and checks because yeah, you guys are driving a lot farther than we're here in Vegas. So everything's pretty compact here, but you guys are definitely a lot more um, spacious. So yeah, that makes sense, but it's not something that would have been on my radar that you have to make periodic checks and things like that. So that's definitely something that I learned today. Very cool. Um, we kind of touched on it, but if there's anything more, what is a common, maybe misconception? What do people just think when they hear educator, what's kind of the first thing that comes to mind? I think a lot of people also either think that educators cannot be zookeepers as well, um, or that we don't care for our animals. And at some zoos, that's absolutely the case. Some zoos, the, the educators just teach, and that's all that they do. But you still, especially if you're handling animals, you have to know a lot about them, and you have to know how to care for them. Um, and a lot of people think that 
some of our animals aren't necessarily as cool as some of the big animals, which sometimes is a bit of a bummer because I love all of my animals. Um, I used to take care of elephants and I loved them too, but my tortoises and my parrots are just as cool as my elephants and they all have their own personalities and they're all, they're all special to us. Even our tarantulas are special to us. Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer, guys, when we hear you guys go, ew, when we take out an animal that we particularly love. So maybe that's something the next time you're able to go and visit a zoo at, sometimes you might not think that animal is really cuddly, but I promise that there's probably some really interesting facts about it. So maybe go up and try to keep an open mind when you're around those animals. What is your favorite part of your job? My favorite part of my job is getting to teach kids that might ne not necessarily get, um, get the same opportunities as other kids. Um, we have received a lot of grants the past few years to go to lower income schools and to go to a lot of schools where the kids might have never been to the zoo. And I love that. I love teaching kids that have never been close to a snake or have never had the opportunity to see some of the things that we show them. Um, that is that is the best. I love it. I love it. Yes, I love the energy. Love it. This is perfect. What is the hardest part of your job? Ooh, there's probably a couple different things. Um, one thing that every single zoo employee will tell you your entire life is um, we do not make a ton of money no matter how much, no matter where you go. Um, zookeeping and zoo educators and all zoo employees it's not a it's not a high paying job so lots of us work two jobs um money is a little bit tight sometimes and that's always a bit of a struggle but i can also go into work every day knowing that i love my job and if i need to take a break i can go look at some bears or i can go pet a bunny <laughs> or something like that which most people don't get to do so it's a trade-off um and the other thing is probably Unfortunately, all animals, nothing lives forever. Um, so I think I said at some point that we've had a couple of losses recently and especially with education, a lot of smaller animals don't live as long as something like a big cat or um, like a monkey. So since my animals are smaller, they don't live as long and you still get just as attached to them. And, um, but things get old and things get health problems and it's just like, just like people, everything gets sick sometimes and that's just the way that it goes, unfortunately. Yeah, you're, you are not the first person to mention this. This tends to be, again, another reoccurring theme. I think the things we hear most are, it is really hard work. <laughs> it is uh, not high paying and that, you know, that the animals end up, you know, being part of it. You're there for, from the entire lifespan of those animals sometimes but from, from birth onwards. So that's something that is definitely taken very seriously. So um, I think it's definitely something that kids do kind of have to be aware of. It's something that we do want to go and bring forward. So that kind of wraps up the, the main portions. Before we get going, is there anything you want to say? If somebody's like, hey, I think this might be the career field for me, or I'm interested in teaching, um, I know that there are a lot of kids out there who are like, I think I want to be a teacher when I grow up, which is great. What would you tell them if they wanted to be maybe a zoo educator? This is a great job. I mean, you can think of it as kind of the best of both worlds. I get to teach, I get to be around kids, I get to even teach adults, which I think is super fun to teach adults things that they don't already know, because lots of adults think that they already know everything. Um, and, and I get to be a zookeeper, so I get to be with animals every single day. It's um, I, I never hate going to work in the morning. I always enjoy my days. Even if a day goes bad, I can, like I said before, I can go out and look at some animals and I can make it better. There's, um, there's really no better combination for me than teaching and animals combined. Yep. Love it. Love it. That is absolutely the best thing. Um, I just want to go and give a huge shout out. Thank you so much for taking part of your day to be able to come and do this. I really hope that somebody out there is going to think, hey, I really think this is a job because guys, this is something, again, I love. I love doing this. I love being able to teach and I need somebody to follow in my footsteps. We can't do it forever, guys. We need somebody else to come in and take it over one day. This is for you. Um, so this is something that's great. And um, I just think that it is, and again, it's, it's something that people don't tend to think about, 
but without educators, guys, you're not going to have zoos. You got to have two sides to the coin. And I like that you get to do both. Um, now, again, she mentioned not every zoo is like that. Uh, at my former education job, I was strictly education. So I was not hands on with the animals, but I got to hang out with them every day. And it was absolutely still an amazing, amazing job. So there's definitely some uh, maybe trade offs or each, every facility is different. So those are things that you might want to go and look into. So if you think that maybe you just want to stick to teaching, just look for education. Um, but if you know that you do want to be working alongside animals,